Welcome to the technological companion to the parameter estimation video lesson. In this technological companion, I'll demonstrate how to perform parameter estimation primarily using MATLAB's built-in maximum likelihood estimation function, or MLE, for the binomial distribution, the geometric distribution, the Poisson's distribution, the hypergeometric distribution, and the normal distribution. Our first parameter estimation example involves the binomial distribution. Suppose we observe a gambler play a game 20 times in any one setting. The gambler plays his sequence of 20 games during six consecutive sessions. In each of these sessions, he wins 12, 11, 9, 8, 10, and then 10 times. We believe his chances of winning any one game are independent of the other games he has played or will play. So we are justified in modeling his chances of winning x out of 20 games with a binomial distribution b of 20, p, and x. The trouble is, is we don't know a value for p, the probability of winning on any one gameplay, any one Bernoulli trial. So we'd like to estimate it. To do so, we're going to begin by defining the sample of our data. So these are just the number of wins that the gambler won each of the six consecutive sessions of 20. We're placing those numbers of wins into an array and storing that array under the variable data. Then, in order to perform parameter estimation, we are going to make use of the general purpose maximum likelihood estimation function in MATLAB, or MLE. And to make use of MLE, we're going to provide it with the data variable, and then we need to tell it which distribution we're modeling our data with, the binomial distribution. And then since the binomial distribution has the additional parameter of n for the number of trials, we have to specify that n trials or n is equal to 20. All right, so if we run those two lines of code by running this section, see that we've generated our array of, of our data and then the estimate for p turns out to be 0.5. And this replicates the value that we saw when we worked this example using method of moments. So method of moments and maximum likelihood estimation produce the same result in this example. Our next and similar example involves the geometric distribution. So suppose you're interested in determining the probability of winning an extremely challenging game of chance. By challenging, we just mean that winning is rare. It's still a pure game of chance, so no skill is actually involved here. A way to do this would be to observe many different people play the game successively. Then we'll record the number of losses each person must experience before winning the game for the first time. So, in order to do that, we store those numbers of losses in an array that we store under the, the variable data. We can see that the first person had to lose 6,054 times before winning for the first time, second person had to lose 4,100 times before their first win, and so on. Now we're going to compute the maximum likelihood estimate for p, the parameter of the geometric distribution. And again, we can use the general purpose MLE or maximum likelihood estimation function of MATLAB. And we just need to pass it the data that we've collected and stored in the variable data. And then we need to tell it that we're working with the geometric distribution. So if we run those two lines of code in order to accomplish parameter estimation, we see that we get a value of p equal to 1.73 times 10 to the negative 4. If you've worked through the example in our previous video lesson or in our course text, you'll see that there's this is the same result. We've reproduced the same result of that, but we've rewritten that example a little bit in order to make it usable in MATLAB. The data is going to, all the values in our data set are going to be off by one. And the reason for that is that the built-in geometric distribution in MATLAB is what we've called G sub zero in our text. It's the geometric distribution where the random variable X represents the number of ordinary outcomes you must experience before observing the first preferred outcome. And when we 
worked through a similar example in the text in, in our previous video lesson using method of moments, our random variable represented the number of trials required to see the first preferred outcome. So which trial number did the first preferred outcome occur on? So those data points that we'd collected in that example were all one higher than the ones that we're looking at now. And we used that, you know, the corresponding geometric distribution. So this is just a reminder that when you're doing anything with the geometric distribution, make sure you are aware of what your random variable represents and use the appropriate version of the geometric distribution, or your results will be off, in some cases, significantly off. Our next example involves the Poisson distribution. Here we have five identical populations of 150 animals that we're studying. Researchers hope to estimate the yearly reproductive rate for this species of animals. They observe that in the first year, the five populations generate 80, 92, 87, 95, and 97 offspring in their first year. So we're going to store that data in an array that we in turn store in under the variable name data. And then we're going to, just like before, compute the maximum likelihood estimate for the lambda parameter of the Poisson distribution. And that's because lambda represents a birth rate, number of occurrences, in this case, births, per year. So we're modeling this process with a Poisson distribution. So we supply our data to the built-in maximum likelihood estimation, the MLE function and then specify that we are working. We're assuming that our data is distributed according to the Poisson distribution. So if we run those two lines of code, we see that our data was in fact stored and that lambda came out to be 90.2. And once again, this re reproduces the result that we saw using the method of moments in both the text and the previous video lesson. So maximum likelihood estimation and method of moments produce consistent results in this case. Our next example is going to be a little bit different because it's going to involve the hypergeometric distribution. And what sets the hypergeometric distribution apart from the other three distributions that we've seen so far, binomial, geometric, and Poisson, is that the parameters we estimated in those cases were continuously varying parameters. They could take on any real value within a, their specified range. The hypergeometric distribution parameters are all discrete parameters. They take on integer values only. And while it's possible to do maximum likelihood estimation with over a discrete parameter, you can't use calculus to find the maximum of a likelihood function that uh, you know, models, our, models our data and depends on discrete parameters. So MATLAB's MLE function just does not work with the hypergeometric distribution. And for that reason, this example will estimate the parameter n using um, just the method of moments formula, the method of moments estimator formula that we've already solved for. So we'll just, we'll, we'll code those formulas into MATLAB in order to construct our estimates for this example. So an ecologist intends to estimate a moose population that resides in Northern Maine. She captures tags and releases K equals 150 members of the moose population, then lets them settle back into the herd. Then she captures five samples, of n equals 40 moose each, and observes that there are five, zero, four, two, and one tagged animals in each of the five samples. So we store those that information in a variable in an array that gets associated with a variable called data, and then we're going to calculate the mean of that data. The reason we're going to calculate the mean of that data is that the mean appears in the method of moments estimator formula for the hypergeometric distribution. So we need to know it. So all we do is write down the method of moments estimator for n in terms of our known parameters of our sample size, our preferred population size, these are the 150 moose that we've tagged, and then x, the mean of our data. And that's all it really takes is to, to, um, to 
compute this estimate. So we'll we'll run these lines of code from our section and see what we've we've obtained. And we see that we we estimate that our our population size is 2,500. And this replicates the result that we found when we did this example essentially by hand in both the text and the associated video lesson to the technological companion we're in now. There are some situations where you've got a population that has a real and not just an artificial preferred category in it. So not only do you want to estimate the total population size, but you want to estimate the size of that preferred category. Mark and recapture can be useful there, and we'll demonstrate how that might work by revisiting our tularemia example uh, with the rabbit populations. So in order to employ mark and recapture, we imagine capturing a group of k0 equal 100 rabbits. We tag one of their ears for each rabbit, re-release them all into the habitat. After they've had a chance to redistribute themselves, we capture eight samples of 30 rabbits each, n equals 30 rabbits each. Then we count the number of tagged rabbits that happen to appear in each sample. And we are sampling without replacement in this case, just to be clear. So the resulting data set is going to be stored under the variable D, and the counts are 3, 0, 2, 4, 1, 1, 4, 2 tagged rabbits in each of those, those eight samples. So we believe that this data ought to be distributed according to a hypergeometric distribution because we're sampling without replacement. We've got a preferred category, even though it's an artificial one, of the tagged rabbits that we captured and released. And we're going to just try to estimate the total population size using mark, mark and recapture. And this is going to just be a repeat of the technique that we saw in the previous example. So we basically need to calculate the mean of our data and plug the mean of our data into the method of moments formula for estimation of the total population size, n times k0 divided by the mean. And so we've entered that data, we've entered that formula into MATLAB here in order to estimate n. Now the thing is, is, once we run those four lines of code, we will have an estimated value for n, so n is essentially known, at least approximately. Once we know that value, we can turn around and sample some more data and use that data to estimate k, where we're counting up the number of rabbits that are not marked, but the number of rabbits in each sample that are infected with tularemia. So we return to our original tularemia data set in order to estimate k, or the number of rabbits in our population that are infected with tularemia. Now when we analyze that data um, previously, recall that the mean of the 40 data points in that data set was 9.525. So we're going to store that mean in a variable called xb. So if we want to calculate k, the size of the preferred population, the one that, that consists of infected rabbits, then we need to rearrange the method of moments formula for n and solve it for k instead. So k is just going to be equal to the total population size, which is now known, the mean, which is 9.525, divided by the sample size of 30. So we would code that into MATLAB and compute. So we'll see what, if we run, run our block of code now, we'll see what all of these results are for us. So you can see that we've entered our data in. We've calculated a total population size of a pro well it's, it's expressed in scientific notation now 1.4118 times 10 to the 3 but if we round that up to the nearest whole number that's going to be 1412 so we've got approximately 1412 rabbits in our population and then when we turned around and estimated k from our original tularemia data set we saw that there's approximately 448 infected rabbits in the population.
we'll now close this example of how to do parameter estimation in MATLAB with a, an example that is tied to the normal distribution. If we imagine assessing the health of a watershed, a stream ecologist might collect a random sample of 10 smallmouth bass and measure their lengths. The results of their length measurements in centimeters are given by this array that we've stored under the variable data. So 22.906, 18.7088, and so on. Those all represent length measurements in centimeters for a sample of 10 smallmouth bass. Now the ecologist believes the data is normally distributed and wants to estimate the mean and variance of the data. So all he has to do is, is compute the sample mean and sample standard deviation. There's no maximum likelihood estimation that's absolutely necessary, but that, that's what he's going to do is calculate the mean and the standard deviation and even the variance. We can calculate that as well. Now I could have computed that estimate using maximum likelihood estimation as well. But there, there's something that you need to be aware of if you're going to go down that road. MATLAB's maximum likelihood estimation function finds the theoretical maximum likelihood estimates for mu and sigma, rather than the unbiased estimates that we computed above. So if you remember, the sample standard deviation and variance are based off of the unbiased sample standard deviation formula. So we're, if you, if you think back to what that is, we're summing up, for the standard deviation, we're summing up the, or for the variance rather, we're summing up the sum of the squares of the deviations of each data point from their mean. And we're dividing that not by n in order to calculate the average of those squares of deviations, we're dividing it by n minus 1, the sample size minus 1. And that, that's done to eliminate bias in that estimator. Maximum likelihood estimation does not produce an unbiased estimator for the variance and standard deviation of the normal distribution. So it finds the, for the variance, it finds the sum of the squares of the deviations of each data point from its mean divided by n. So when we run this maximum likelihood estimation formula, we'll see that it is different than, um, it's going to give us results that are different than what we got up here in um, our, just our use of the sample mean and sample standard deviation and variance. If we wanted to compute the unbiased estimates without having to just hard code mean, standard deviation, and variance functions, then we could use MATLAB's norm fit function instead, because that's going to fit a normal distribution in an unbiased way to a data set. So let's look at the differences between these three approaches by just running our block of code. Okay. So we've stored our data. These results here calculate the sample mean, sample standard deviation, and sample variance. These results here represent the results of maximum likelihood estimation. So the sample mean is fine. That, that agrees with what we had before. But we can see that the sample standard deviation and variance are slightly different. 1.4559 instead of 1.5346 for the standard deviation, and 2.1196 instead of 2.3551 for the variance. If we wanted our approximate parameters to agree with the ones that come from using the sample variance and standard deviation, the norm fit does that. Get the correct sample mean, and then standard deviation agrees with the 1.5346 that we had before. And of course, if we squared that, we'd get the variance formula that we had before. So those are just some differences to be aware of when you're exploring the different approaches to fitting a normal distribution to a data set. Well, that brings us to the end of this technological companion. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful. I also hope you'll be able to join us for the next video lesson.